Okay. Hi, Nancy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Nice thank to see you, William. Thank you for being here. I know there's a bit of a time difference. Um, so, Nancy, like we were talking before, uh, equity and inclusion and diversity are front and center in the news, in our minds. And we've got a lot of educators who, and schools and businesses and organizations that want to ensure they're inclusive educators. So I'm hoping and I'm, I'm knowing that you're going to help with that conversation. So thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So my first question is, you know, we talk about making learning stick for everyone and inclusion is a key in that system. So why, from your vantage point, is inclusion such an important key to make learning stick for everybody? Yeah, you know, I think that's important. So when when we think about making learning stick, it's like, how do we hold on to it, right? How do we retain it? And when students are um, emotionally removed from the curriculum and from the environment, when they don't feel that they belong, there's no way that we're going to be able to make learning stick for them, right? I've got to feel one belonging. If we think about Maslow's hierarchy, you know, I got to feel safe. I got to feel that I belong. I got to feel that my my voice and who I am are valued. And so inclusion has to be on that list. You can have the most amazing lesson plan. You can have the most amazing instructional strategies, you know, that are super dynamic and super um, exciting. But if we haven't taken into account who the learner is, we're going to miss them. We're going to lose them. And so, it, you know, for me, just adding that extra thought, like, who are you as a student? Is that racially? Is that ethnically? Is that religiously? You know, how do I help you connect with the content so that you feel like you're represented there? And when, once we do that, we know that learning sticks. Uh, you know, one of the things that strikes me from what you're saying, too, is feeling. Do yeah. they feel? They, yes. they feel Because we're always talking about the mind, but you're saying mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. So the, the other, the second question, really, which we talk about all the time, you and I, but also mm -hmm. learning, is <clears throat> why do we need, and you allude to this, but why do we need to be thinking about the identities mm -hmm. of our learners? So race, gender, sexual orientation, all identities, and also our own identities as an educator, if we're trying to get learning to stick for everyone. Why do we have to be looking through those lenses of our students and ourselves? Yeah, because, well, so if I, if I were to ask you, William, like, what are your top three identities, right? And then if I were to share my top three, they, they may not be the same thing. And it doesn't minimize your top three nor my top three, right? But what it means is, is if you're my teacher and your top three don't have anything to do with my top three, do you, are you able to create space for me to show up with my top three. So like for me, race is number one. And especially right now, you know, race can kind of take different levels, whether it's one, two or three for me. But right now, and what's happening in the US, um, race is number one for me. I'm, I'm acutely aware of my race. And so when, when we're talking and, we're, and when I'm working with other people, if I can't share some of the fears and some of the things that are coming up around me around race because it's not something that you think is important or that you value or why can't you just get over it and why do we have to talk about it, um, I'm, I'm left to stuff all that. I'm stuck in this place because I, there's times that I'm literally afraid for my life. And so... If I can't share that with you, if there's no space because you don't share my identity and you don't share the, like race as being uh, uh, something that you think you really need to talk about or that you should talk about, then I'm really lost. And again, I'm going back to Maslow's hierarchy. If I don't feel safe, if I don't feel like I belong, it doesn't matter how amazing your instructional strategies are. Um, it's not going to stick for me because I can't even I'm not even in the room. Even though I'm physically here, I'm not emotionally here because I got all this stuff. So is there space to support me where I need support so I can get past that and then I can actually show up and be in the room with you? It's almost like when you describe it that way, if again, the way you said about my top three may not be your top three, mm -hmm. so that means I actually have to be aware as an educator what I'm not having to negotiate and then thinking of what my students might be or are. Absolutely. And then that's going to inform, I'm thinking out loud how you're saying this, inform my curriculum choices, my classroom mm -hmm. or location setup, the language would I, that I use, mm -hmm. the seating plan. It's going to inform all those kinds of choices because I know, in this case, who you are, Nancy, or how you're sharing. Okay. Right? 
And it doesn't. Right. And it even informs it even informs how you set up the room that day. I mean, it's literally day to day. Right. So if there's something that happens. Um, for instance, I was in a meeting with um, three Jewish women and um, something happened to a synagogue. Well, I'm not Jewish, but I know that that's where their mind is. They can't be in the space with me until we can resolve some of those things going on. And sometimes the resolution is just being able to say it out loud, right? To just name it and to and to share what's in your heart so that you can, you know, I always say, let it flow and then let it go so that you can be present, right? So our role is I need to understand who I am. I need to understand who you are. And, and then I can create space to be open to the, the different perspectives that may not be mine, but I know that they're still important, right? So it's not punishing me for not having those things on my list. But what it is, is saying that I acknowledge that if they're not on my list, how do I get them on my list so that I can support you more effectively? We talk about this in Unleashed Learning, but I'm just really, it's like, I have to be having lenses on my, like I have to be seeing from those vantage points and then seeing from mine because I might miss that. Yes. I'm going to miss that unless I am making a decision to pay attention and be right. thinking about who my learners are in the way. Right. And also creating space that even if you miss it again, um, you might miss it. I might miss it. But is there space for someone to share to me? Okay. Share with me like this is where I am right now. Right. And, and this is what's coming up for me. And I'm having a really hard time being present because I'm having to deal with this. And, you know, right now we'd like to have a separation where those things are external to education, but it's just not, it's not the world we're living in anymore. Um, everything, especially with um, COVID and and everything that's happened, you know, it, it's it's so enmeshed now that we we have to we have to be checking in with each other that we're okay. Yeah, it's just yeah. Okay, so let's do some definitions. Can we do some definitions? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Definition hour. Okay, these are the okay. questions we get all the time. Okay. And I thought it'd be helpful if you could help the ways you define these kinds of terms. Okay. So I'll give a term, and then if you give us a definition, I'll do that. Term. Okay. So um, how do you define diversity? Okay. So I, I will say that I, I call these working definitions, right? So these are agreed upon definitions. Other people may have them. And so one of the biggest things, even before I start defining, is for us to say that this isn't the definition. It is a definition. And if it doesn't sit well with you, how do you, um, how do you get uh, collaboratively create something that's shared so that you all know that you're talking about the same thing, right? So when I talk about diversity, I, I define it as all the ways in which people differ. And it's that simple. Diversity is just all the ways in which we differ, right? And, and acknowledging that there, it, that there are, it's exponential. And so if it goes back to that list thing, if I know that we're different, um, how do I make space for your differences? Right? So language, religion, yeah, sexual orientation, race, you know, gender, all, all those things are, are about diversity. Right? And so um, my question then would be, what is my attachment to some of those labels? Right? So um, do I have a deficit thinking about some of those labels? Because the us differing diversity is neither good nor bad. It is. It's what we attach to it that makes it good or bad. Right. Also, so what, you, oh, sorry. I was thinking about how you said what you're negotiating also, how it, when you talk about race, sometimes yeah. negotiate different times. Yes. So also from the place that you're negotiating it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love the, how do we make space for it? Yeah. Great. I've never heard you say that one before. That's a good. Yeah. Uh, and, okay. and I think also I want to, and I just want to reiterate, it's like diversity is it, there's, there's no, it's neither here nor there, right? It is. What do we make of it? That's what determines. And when we talk about diversity, at least in the U S it's always about celebrate diversity and how wonderful it is. And I always say there's a shadow side. And the shadow side is it's also complicated. There's a lot of misunderstandings. Uh, there's confusion. There's all those things. And if we only look through the lens of 
um, the positive side to that looking at the challenges. When the challenges show up, and they will, <laughs> they will show up, we're always pissed off about it. You know, we're angry because, you know, I always say, do you value diversity when you have to translate that document into 32 different languages? Are you still thinking diversity is so wonderful? You know what I mean? But if we walk into it knowing that, that, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be difficult at times, but the outcome is what we're striving for. The outcome is that unity. And if we can focus on the outcome, then that, that road to get there that may sometimes be difficult will be worth it. It's terrific. Terrific. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Next definition. Can I ask the next one? Yes, please. Okay. Equity. How do you define equity? Okay. Um, the fair treatment, access, opportunity, and advancement for all people. Mm. Right. And so um, the, the, it's the notion of access, opportunity, opportunity and advancement. Right. Which means that we all it doesn't mean that we get the same thing. It's not equal. It means that we have the ability and the opportunity and the access to obtain those things. Regardless of who we are, what skin we show up in, what language we speak when we show up in it, you know. Okay, so let's okay. do the, the last one because this is the one we, we get asked a lot. So how do you define inclusion, Nancy? Um, I say it's the act of creating environments in which any individual or group can be and feel welcomed, respected, supported, and valued to fully participate. Yeah, but, and, and to participate, to fully participate, right? Because, you know, we have, you, you can look at these models where the, they're like, well, we're inclusive, but you, you, have, you have this very, you know, let's say diverse, but everyone's in their silos mm -hmm. with everyone who looks like them, right? That's not inclusion, right? That, that's actually separation, right? It's, 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 they're there, but they're not included, right? So inclusion is what does it look like when we're doing this? Right, that we all can fully participate wherever we wherever we want to, not just about where we fit in because of what we look like or what we sound like or where we're from, you know, or who we love, you know, that that we can fully participate and feel welcome and respected regardless. It's the world I want to live in. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. We're working for it we're for sure. We are absolutely working for it. Um, let me let me end with this question. Um, you know, we talk about making learning stick for everyone, and so I'm curious um, with the work that you do. What do you do? Maybe you know we don't like just talking about strategies. It's a big mm -hmm. organization, of course. But mm -hmm. what do you do to ensure, from an inclusion standpoint, that you're ensuring learning sticking for everyone rather than just delivering information? Yeah, you know, um, and I sometimes I I think it's our strongest and um, best quality, um, but you know, it, not everyone loves it. But I think the way we make learning stick is truly because we start with the personal, right? We we start with the reflective practitioner. It's you know, it, there's too many of our efforts that are you know, all of our attention is external about fixing someone else, but we forget that it takes two to tangle, right? And if if something's wrong out here and I'm a part of that system, then there's something wrong in here. There's something that I can do to be better, to help the system be better, right? And so um, I think for us, our, our kind of secret sauce has been that it is, it's all about our own personal role and responsibility into whatever change we wanna see. And first I have to acknowledge what are the barriers that I might bring to the table without even knowing it um, and being willing to look at some of the biases I might have um, and then being able then to turn the lens outward and say, okay, this is how I show up, which is how, why I perceive it this way. And so it helps me engage in a way because it's very personal, right? Instead of I'm going to fix you. And if I, and if it doesn't, if my, if my little antidote doesn't work for you, that's just too bad because it's your fault. You didn't get it mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, and we go back to just good, good teaching, right? Good teaching is if your student's failing, the first question we should be asking ourselves is what have I not done well as a teacher instead of what's wrong with this kid that he or she is failing, right? And if we start from the I, I think we can get a lot further. It's why in the Unleashed Learning System, the educator or teacher is one of the keys in the system yeah. to make learning stick. And you just explained it perfectly from an equity yeah. 
Same point. So um, if you'll hold on for just a second, Nancy, okay. uh, we always like to ask uh, everybody watching a question. So I'm going to turn to the audience right now. And a question we've got for you from the discussion with Nancy is, what is a way that you ensure you're an inclusive educator? What's the stuff that you do to ensure a sense of belonging and equal participation, just like Nancy was talking about? So some of the best conversations take place after the episode. So jump over there and Join the conversation. You can also grab our free ebook, Five Easy Ways to Make Online Learning Stick. That's a great resource, especially in the world we're living in right now. So grab that. So I'll go back to you, Nancy, and say, you know what I think about you. And I'm so grateful for the time and the wisdom and the work you do in the world. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, William. Thank you for having me. And I always, I'm always happy to have an opportunity to talk with you. And this is great. Thank you for what you do. Talk soon. Okay, bye. If you're an educator at a school, business, or organization, knowing how to make learning stick for everyone might be the most important thing you know how to do. Make learning stick for everyone. My new book is here. 